good. All right. Hi, folks. I'm Carol Wilder with Jefferson County, Kentucky Extension. We're going to talk a little bit about today uh, doing some decorating at home with things that you can find inexpensively out and about, either in your landscape, in a park, uh, possibly even in your garden as you go on walks and so forth. During this time, we find ourselves inside a lot, but we do go out and we've walked more, we've seen more of our parks, we've seen more of our neighborhoods, and sometimes those things can be brought in and they can help us decorate for holidays. And we have quite a few coming up. Of course, we've got Halloween. Many people are decorating for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and very, uh, there's, there's a variety of uh, different types of holidays that are celebrated between now and of course to the first of the year. Uh, many are religious, some uh, are actually secular, so it just depends on what you're decorating for and what you want. But one of the things that I always go to are decorative grasses. Now this is one, it's a miscanthus, this is a decorative grass, this one is in full bloom. These are in full bloom at this point. They look very airy. When they're not quite in full bloom, they look a little bit more like somebody would see possibly wheat or other grains growing in the field. But these decorative grasses, the ornamental grasses, they all have different seed pods. And when they're open, they have a very fluffy, very organic, uh, some people think they look feminine that way. Uh, some people just like the airy look. They're just very attractive and they're easy to work with. One that we used last year, this particular one, was more like a foxtail and actually came from a type that uh, did produce a seed head that was a little bit different. And you can see that's a year old and they have holding pattern to them. They have a very long shelf life as a decoration as long as they're stored properly. And it's very, very easy to work with these. Now, with this particular grass, it's a miscanthus. They're very hardy. You find them everywhere. Uh, a lot of people call them uh, pampas grass and sea grasses. And you want to look at whatever it is you're going to put it in. And I'm going to use a tall vase because these are pretty tall shoots. So I'm going to cut that. And we can always come back in and re-cut it. And this is literally using from a Dollar Tree. So this is not costing any more than a dollar and just a little bit of scrap ribbon. And when you put this together, you have a little bit of color, you've got something natural, and it's really easy to put different sizes and looks of these types of grasses anywhere you'd like to have them. Most of these are going to last a little bit longer. I did not spray them with hairspray, but if you do spray them with hairspray or art fixative, these tiny little seeds and this very airy material stays with the plant a little longer. So you could actually work with this in your home as a decoration for a much longer period of time. If you are out and about and you're not quite ready, when you pick up your grasses, take them, bundle them, and store them upside down. What that's going to do is allow this to dry out in such a way that it's not gonna curve or curl too awful much. Now these were stored upside down and we get a little bit of curl but you don't get all the way over to the point where it's touching possibly food or other things that might be on the table. So you can control 
the actual arrangement a little bit longer. Something else you can do with these, of course, is just take them literally as a whole, and you'll see I cut a bunch of them. You can literally take these, just put a bow around them, and if you have a long table, you want to have something a little bit natural on, you want to have a little bit of that fall feeling in your home, you just arrange it the way that you like them to be. You could have your seed heads all at one end. You can take and divide them and put seed heads at both ends. So it just depends on what is attractive to you. Something like this looks really good this time of year on a uh, fireplace mantle, something that's long and slender, but you haven't got your Christmas stuff up, you haven't got Thanksgiving, you haven't got possibly um, Hanukkah or whatever else you might be putting up for the end of the year, but something that just would be a little bit decorative and you don't quite want to, to get into cutting back your evergreens, something like this works really well on a long slender piece like that. So these are really easy and of course, they're inexpensive because they're free. You're growing them in your backyard or you're finding them along parks and other areas that you walk. I do suggest that if you're going to cut them while you're on a walk, that you do that uh, on the easement. Uh, if you're entering anybody's yard, of course, ask them if you can can prune or cut anything off of, of any of the plants that they may have at an end of a drive or something along those lines. But something that simple can be done and you're using what is natural and what we have right there in our landscapes. Now I'm gonna be using some live greenery and we're gonna treat this just like we would live flowers. What is in the jar? is the wet foam. You can get them by the block, just one block, there's three in this one, but one block, you can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Walmart if you want multiples. A lot of this has come from the Dollar Tree or from someplace similar to that where there's just not a whole lot of money put in it, but we're getting a splash of those things to add so that we can get just a little bit more color than what we're putting together. So this is just a regular mason jar, per jar, and we put a little bit of ribbon around it and hot glued it in place. And boxwoods are great for this time of year. One thing I will say about boxwoods, if you have boxwoods growing in and around your home, do not choose to cut from a variety that has that particular boxwood smell. Some boxwoods have a tendency when they get, when the foliage gets warm to smell like cat urine. You don't want that in your home. So choose a boxwood, it's fine outdoors, you don't notice it there. But once you get it in, in your home where it's warm and enclosed, you definitely wanna make sure that you're not choosing one. The, the way to figure that out if you're not sure outside is just lightly brush it and breathe in. If it has that scent, you know that's not the right plant that you're looking for. But most of the boxwoods being planted now are not from that particular genetic gene pool. They're trying to produce more and more boxwoods that aren't the old fashioned English boxwood that has that smell. So that's the one thing you do wanna check. Now, when you're working with these, of course, you're gonna be using pruners because this is a little heavier than it would be if you're using just uh, regular cut flowers. But you're going to arrange it the same way. Most arrangements have a very general, triangular look. So you want that tallest spot to be in the center. I'm going to do this 
hopefully where you can see it pretty well. Is that coming across well? I hope so. What we're going to do is put in, and you each of course branch is going to be different and you can cut them and you can play with them to see what works. But because we've got the film in here, this is going to last a little longer. And of course, it's going to stay fresh longer if you keep it wet. Now, as we put this in, we put them in and we've cut them a little bit shorter. And it's not an exact triangle, but you're starting to get an idea. Now, I am, of course, doing this a little bit backwards. You'd be most of the time facing it. But so you can see, putting in the greenery, we have that set to where you have a nice triangular shape. And now we can come in and put some other things into it that is going to, again, give you a little bit more oomph as far as decoration and color. If you're out walking, you may find different pods. You've got different types of pine cones. This particular pod is from a magnolia tree. Your spruces have the smaller, tighter cones. You've got all kinds of berries. Now, this particular berry is off a of hawthorn. They're very closely related to apples. So if you've got crab apples or some of the ornamental apples in your neighborhood, go ahead and pull those leaves off or shake them off if they've started to turn. And these are excellent to be used in any of these arrangements. So some of these small pieces, just for color, I'm going to put in just to give us a little bit of natural color. And they're not all going to be the same size. We're not going to have the same amount of berries, but that's okay. One thing we do try to think about when we're putting any of these arrangements together is you want to think in odd numbers, threes, fives, or singles, because God and Mother Nature didn't put things together in such a way that you have two bushes here, two bushes here, five roses there, five roses there. It's not all equal. So we want it to look very natural. So you usually don't work with twos and fours. You try to keep it a little bit more simple and go with those odd numbers. The question then becomes, how much color do you want? So our third color, we're putting in the third piece. It's going to be down in front, and it's going to give us a little bit of a look where we're getting a little bit over, but not a whole lot. Now we can stop here, or we can go through and pull out various types of silks that can also give us a fall look. Unfortunately, leaves that are turning don't save well. And uh, there is an argument for, you could go out and cut some really pretty maples and things like that for the greenery and put them in a jar with some water. And then as the leaves fell, you would leave them around the bottom just to have a look. And that has been done and it's nice, but it can be kind of shabby. And um, some folks wanna have it a little bit neater and more controlled. And if that's the case, then you go to silks. And when you go to silks, there are so many to be found. Walmart had a bunch at 98 cents. There were a lot at uh, the Dollar Tree big lots, a lot of different places had silks that would work for this time of year. So just coming in and putting in just a little bit extra, you've got just a little bit of color. And again, putting it in the back 
you actually have an arrangement that you can see from all sides. It doesn't have to face a specific way. Although most people would want to have most of the berries in front. Now, granted, all of this is going to eventually dry. And then you just pull that out. You save your silks for next year. And that gives you a really simple way, again, to pull in greenery. Next month, we're going to be talking about using evergreens and things like that. Um, so you have a little bit more to choose from when you get a little bit closer to December. But this, again, is one of those really easy pieces that you are just pulling in what is naturally in your yard. Now, one thing I did look for, and I didn't find any in my neighborhood, other than the one I had in my backyard, um, was hydrangeas. Hydrangea blooms right now look really, really good. They're starting to, to get more color because as they age, they'll come out white or green, but as they age, they'll actually take on pinks and peaches in almost a purplish tone. This was like that two months ago. This is from a, uh, this is from one of the Kentucky native hydrangeas and oak leaf. And they are absolutely gorgeous, but even brown and completely dried, you still have a really nice look that again, could go in an arrangement. Now, a lot of people ask me, where do I find tiny pine cones if I can't get a spruce and so forth? Take your regular pine cones. Guess what? They break really well. Then you have very tiny, easy baby pine cones. And that's something that's very easy to do, but then you can decorate a container this is actually a pickle jar. You can put any number of things. You can put seed. You can put candy to give away. You can put popcorn as gifts. These, and you would never believe a pickle jar would make a great gift. But you fill it with what you want. And then once you put your top on, then you're just decorating the top. And what we have here is an example of what we did last year with that. Now these are leftover seeds. So we just have a canning jar with leftover seeds. And we have some silks with a couple of different acorns. We have some small acorns and some larger acorns. Acorns hold up really well. If you have an oak tree collecting them, you could fill the jar with acorns. So what you could do is take a container like that, fill it with just about anything you want. If you're going to give it away, if you were going to do something that uh, you wanted to do a little something for someone and you wanted to give as gifts, and you wanted to do multiples, an easy thing to fill it with besides seed, is to fill it with dried moss. And the dried moss is easily found. And again, it looks very natural. And once you put the cap on, you have something that is going to look natural and all you're going to do is cover it with the different types of silks. Now this, the only thing that you're doing natural is what's on the inside, but this could be given as a gift. Again, it can be done in different sizes, and it's all you're doing is decorating the top. And you can do it, I like to do it with the top on it, so I can get an idea of the size of what I'm doing. You've got a lot of different types, again, of silks to work with. I like working with these when we have a little bit of uh, some of the silk vines. They work out really well around the tops and a hot glue gun, and I use the cool temps so that 
I'm not going to hurt myself and I'm not going to hurt anybody else who happens to be in the room. And I want just enough to put that down and stick it in one spot, hopefully, and then come back in and secure it with a little bit more. And the whole thing is just getting it started. The other nice thing about using a jar that is a common size is if you get tired of that cap, you can toss the cap, get another cap that, that fits it, and it's the same way with canning jars, but they're very hard to find this year because of COVID and a lot of people are trying canning. That this way, you can have those tops and you can save them and switch them out any way you want. You've got all kinds, again, of things that we can use on top. That again, we're holding it just long enough for it to set up. I don't think I used enough glue. I was getting to the end of my glue stick there. I didn't have quite enough glue. It doesn't go in the state where I want it to be. So we will put more glue there. And then once you start to build your structure that you're wanting on top, you can do anything with it that you want. I try to be as general as possible because what you find on your property or around your, your home and landscape may be a little bit different. If you had dried gourds, if you had dried flowers of any kind, if you have berries of different types that you want to use. All of those can be used in one of these arrangements. And we're going to put a little bit something different here. We're going to put in the magnolia. The neat things about magnolia is if you can get to them early, is you can still get the red seed that's in it, and that gives you a little bit more splash of color. Now, because these lovely leaves are hiding where I'm gluing it, I don't need to hide it. And again, you get a whole lot of different texture by using different types of ornamentation. And this is another one that I'm going to cut to make it just a little smaller. And I'm going to take the tiny one that I had from earlier so that I'm going to use it in the back to cover the lid so it's not obvious. The nice thing about silks is they're very forgiving. And you can get them in so many different colors. In this type of time of year, sometimes somebody wants something that might be a little creepier because they're decorating for Halloween, in which case you could put 
ghoulish pumpkins and skulls and purple roses with eyeballs and all kinds of things like that. So it just depends on what you personally want and exactly how much you want to do. So if there is enough color in it for you, that's where you stop. If you want to make it so nobody sees the lid at all, that's when you usually come in with a little bit of ribbon. And we are going to do a ribbon class in the future as far as making bows. And of course, that's not going to be shown sure to have that. I should have known that. And all you're wanting is just enough underneath to hide what you have done. And the only question is, do you want the good side or the bad side of the ribbon to show? Because sometimes you want something shiny. And sometimes you don't. So all this does is then give you something to give you a little color to hide exactly where that lid is. So you're not seeing what you've done to the actual lid because for the most part the lid is covered. Now in the back where the seam is on the ribbon that could be trimmed. I've just gone ahead and just glued it where if you look at the back it is obvious but that is really easy to hide because all you do then is you take a leaf and you cover it. And then when everything has dried and set up, and it takes a little bit with hot glue, depending upon how hot it is, it leaves a little bit of spider webbing. And for some things this time of year, that's a good thing. But again, you have something that you have put very little time and effort into, and you have pulled it, for the most part, from your yard, from your landscape, from the park. All of these things, like I said, are easily found locally. They're uh, more expensive places to find them. Your craft stores are going to have them. But wire, your cutters, Work with things that you already have at home to keep your cost down. And if you're definitely working with children, use the cool glue and the low temp on the hot glue. It is hot enough to hurt, but it's not hot enough to blister. And um, that makes it a little bit easier for everybody involved because we definitely don't want our children to be hurt while we're trying to do crafty things with them. But that's basically taking things out of our yard and working with them decoratively. Obviously, you can take a basket and you can fill them with the blooms, the grasses, the pods, any of these things that you may have a lot of in your own home and then just put a simple bow on it. So as you see here, we've done several in about half an hour or so. And that's just giving you an idea on where you start, where you might want to go with it. If you have questions, give us a call at 502-569-2344. And I'm Carol Wilder. You can also email me. It's Carol. C A R O L dot Wilder, W I L D E R at UKY dot EDU. 
So we thank you and uh, appreciate you tuning in. And if you're seeing this on recording and you have some questions, by all means, give me a call, shoot me off a message. Is there anything I can do for you now? If you have any questions.